watching Andy Tube. In this video, I want to show you how to wind a bobbin on the Singer Model 338. And I'm going to assume that you've never wound a bobbin in your life. So those of you who are already expert bobbin winders, you, you may not need to even watch this. But you might pick up something, so what the heck. Anyway, first I want to show you a little closer um, some of the parts that I'm going to mention so that when I do mention them you'll have a, an idea of what they are. And uh, up here on the top you have a nylon plastic spool pin. It's a little plastic stick that is set up in there to hold a spool of thread. And depending on your model uh, 338, this spool pin here may be over in the center position on top of the cover for the uh, style disc, or you may have two set up here. The other thing I want to mention is this is the arm cover, and this is the arm cover thread guide where the thread snaps in from the back towards the front, from the back side towards you. The next thing is the bobbin winder tension disc. And it is down here below the uh, bobbin winder system. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Right there. And it is a tension disc. It has a, it has a spring in there, behind there, and you can flick it with your finger or screwdriver, and you'll you'll feel that little tension spring in there. And the idea of this is to hold the the right amount of tension on the thread as it goes up to the bobbin winder. That's what that looks like. A little closer, okay, and then. Uh, on the hand wheel end of the machine, you do have the hand wheel and you have the stop motion nut. And the idea of this is when the stop motion nut is tightened clockwise, it engages a, a mechanism that allows the hook and the needle bar to move so everything moves when you hold the hand wheel like this and you turn that stop motion knob to the left and it stops it's it's about a quarter of a turn the idea is that it disengages the hook and the needle bar because there's really no reason to run those mechanisms when you're going to wind a bobbin the what you what you're going to run is the motor and the hand wheel. And it's going to turn the hand wheel because the actual bobbin winder spindle, up here, when that spindle is engaged by moving the bobbin winder lever to your right, it pushes the, the tire, rubber tire or friction ring against the back side of the hand wheel so that when the motor turns the hand wheel this friction ring uh, turns and therefore the spindle turns okay so those are some of the parts that I'm going to be using and I wanted you to see them a little closer so you have an idea and uh, just as a little trivia, I was going through some of my uh, service guides yesterday for this machine. And in the service guide, they called it turquoise, the color turquoise. So it's a little, it's a little green for me. I think a turquoise is more blue, but, but I have documents that called it jade green. And I have documents that call it turquoise. So it's up to you. Okay, uh, let's get started. And by the way, when the when the when the ma machine is plugged into the wall and the cords plugged in, 
the the machine operates by the foot pedal. There's no on-off switch for that. The the on-off switch here only operates the light. So you can sew with the light or without. But if the machine's plugged in and the cord uh, to the wall, the cord's plugged into the machine, your foot pedal is live. Okay, so when I'm going to uh, wind a bobbin here, what what I'm going to do is come over here and I'm going to disengage the stop motion nut by turning it counterclockwise. Okay, now and that's to disengage the needle bar and the hook. Now this machine I haven't restored it yet so unfortunately it's so dirty up in there that even with the nut disengaged and the clamp free it's still look it's still moving everything so that is not normal what you want is when that stop motion nut is turned counterclockwise and released only the hand wheel should be turning and then we're going to take our spool of thread and we're going to put it up on one of the uh, spool pins it's up to you which one and it's up to you if the thread comes off the front which I prefer or let's turn it over and it come, the thread comes off the back side doesn't make any difference that's a personal preference then we're going to come right across <coughs> the top of the arm and we're going to snap that thread into whoop we're going to snap that thread into the top of uh, the arm thread guide. Okay, then we're going to take our class 66 bobbin, which can be either metal or plastic, your preference, class 66. And in both of them, there's small hole or holes near the hub of the bobbin. And there's little small holes there. And you want to run your thread from between the two sides of the bobbin out one of the holes. Okay, so from the inside out. And I, I do this here because I can... Uh, see it better and I can control it better if I do this part right now before I continue running the thread so whoops I got lucky and I now have my thread going in between the sides and out the little hole on the side so I'm going to keep that steady when I come down here, I'm going to take that thread and put it from the underside up a little bit into the bobbin winder tension disc. And that's going to create, you see how firm that's going to create my tension on that thread. And the reason that you want tension here is because you, it's very important that the thread winding on the bottom is even. Uh, the, the smoother this thread winds on there and the more evenly the better your sewing experience will be. So we're going to move the engagement lever over to the right which moves the spindle and you can see how that's going to See, it's starting to, let's get closer now. It's starting to turn that uh, bobbin on the spindle. Right? See how that's got some movement now? So if you hold that thread off to the side a little bit, and we're going to put, uh, use the foot controller or foot pedal now to power up the motor, and you want an even speed, whatever speed you choose. You want an even speed. So, and I suggest the speed not be full bore because it can wind the thread too tight. 
I usually use a moderate speed, but the best hint is to use a consistent speed. So we're going to wind a little bit and stop. And that's to trim off this thread now so it doesn't get tangled in there at all. And then we're going to just continue winding that bobbin at a steady speed. And this does this does not have an automatic stop. So you just watch the bobbin and you fill it to the amount for the project you're going to do. You need a third of a bobbin or a half a bobbin or full. I'm approaching halfway so I'm going to call it a day with that. There. Um, don't overfill right up to the edge because it can slip off and you'll just have a mess. So you want to wind it at a steady speed and I think moderate speed. Now we're going to disengage the spindle from the hand wheel by just moving the lever to the left. And we can come down here. I, I go down anywhere near that tension guide and just snip the thread off. And then pull the bobbin off of the spindle and there is my nicely evenly wound bobbin. Ta -da. So see how easy that is to wind a bobbin on the Singer 338? No problem. Okay and I'll back out now because I want to remind you that on a good working machine not a dirty machine like this you need to go back and hold your hand wheel and turn that stop motion knob back clockwise to the right or away from you until it locks. That way when you start to sew you won't wonder how come your needles not going up and down. So there is the winding a bobbin on a single model Singer model 338. Thank you so much. See you next time. Take care.